Okay, so we're talking about purifying the altar. Thank you, David, for covering for me last week. Um, and uh, we'll just, uh, if you have any questions, I haven't seen the video from last week, Sharon. I still have to get with her to get that, but I'm sure he did a, an awesome job. Are there any questions from last week? Mm -mm. <laughs> what was that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, Cassie? <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> wow, really well done. It was interesting on my behalf, on me. Oh. It was, I was not understanding anything last uh, week. Yeah. And I just could not <laughs> grasp what was being told to me. And so I kept, so the recording is. You were asking good questions. The yes. recording is interesting. So did you get all your questions answered? Yes, David did an amazing job. Okay. I did not. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll see the recording. And as long as you got your questions asked, that's an awesome thing. But I will put that up on our website, uh, YouTube, as soon as I process it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is our site for giving. And you know how heavy I am with giving. So the purpose for this is tips to learn the purpose of the altar, to identify pure and impure altars, position mm -hmm. ourselves to give. Huh? The basket, we hand you the basket. Uh, uh, and to serve God by worshiping him with our hearts and our resources. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the purpose of this. Uh, this teaching is to understand what the tithe uh, and the offering is for, is for but more importantly, to understand if you're sowing into an impure altar, um, how we can pretty much recognize that. So Numbers 25, 13 says, in this covenant, I give him and his descendants a permanent right to the priesthood. For in his zeal for me, his God, he purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. So that's really the job of the priest. And there's three priesthood that's mentioned in the Bible. Mekedish, Mekel, Mekel, is the first one. It's an eternal priesthood represented by Jesus Christ. And that comes from Hebrews 7, 4 through 11. The second one we most know about is the uh, Aaron priesthood. The Aaron priesthood is found in Matthew, is in the Old Testament, but it's also in the New Testament in Matthew 27, 51, and Hebrews 9 and 8. The Aaron repre priesthood represents a temporal or in this life type of priesthood. It's a shadow of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, uh, Aaron represents a shadow of who Jesus would be. But now we are the Aaron's. We have become the New Testament believers. We have become the Aaron's of the New Testament. We are now priests and kings because of Aaron. Okay. And then you also have another type of priest, which is the Levite. And when we're talking about the tithes and we're talking about where the tithe went to, it went to the Levites. Levites are mentioned in Numbers 8, 13 through 19. And the New Testament Levite is the fivefold ministry. Uh, the priesthood was was uh, to do the work for Aaron. So if, if, if Lal is an Aaron, my work that I do as a Levite is to help Aaron in the things that he does. It, it does the work of the tabernacle. And so the fivefold ministry is now representative of that Levite ministry. And so these three ministries is what we're really talking about, but we're going to focus on the Levite because that's where the, the tithes and the offering talks about going to in the New Testament. So any ministry that defiles the people is an impure, is an impure uh, covenant, is an impurity against the covenant. If you're going to a church that's teaching false doctrine, you're part of an, in, and you're sowing into that altar, you're sowing into something that's defiling you. You're sowing into something that's making you impure. And so whatever you're sowing into and that impurity, that impurity now has a right to have access into your life. For those who don't know what the fivefold ministry is, today's Levites, you have the teacher who's set to, 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 to ground. Teachers are set to ground you. Pastors are taught, set to guard you. Evangelists are set to gather you. 
prophets are set to guide you and apostles are set to govern. And so when we think about the fivefold ministries, that's what we're talking about as far as the Levites. And um, I have to put the, this is uh, coming from Ephesians 4, 11 through 4, 11, 4, 7 through 11. But unto one of us is given grace. These are graces that God has given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Just like the Aaron priesthood um, and the Levites was a gift, was a gift to the church. So too <laughs> is a fivefold ministry a gift to the body of Christ. Yeah. At least I got one amen in the church. Amen. Wherefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same as ascended up above all heaven, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, and there's a fivefold ministry, apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And so this is the New Testament Levite that we have. If you have a question, I don't see your hand. So just kind of step in and ask your questions as you go, because I don't see your hand. So please do ask. If we look at Numbers 18, 21 through 24, this is where the Levites are also mentioned. Behold, I have given children a Levi of a tenth in Israel as an inheritance for their service, which they serve, uh, even the service of the tabernacle and congregation. So this goes back to what I was talking about, the purpose of the, of the priesthood and the Levites. They were there to serve the tabernacle and the congregation. Um, Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come into the tabernacle of congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle and the con congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statue for uh, forever throughout your generation that among the children of Israel, there shall be no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering, Unto the Lord I have given to the Levites to the inheritance. Therefore, I say unto them, among all the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. So I ask you a question. When you think about your tithe and you think about your offering, what's the purpose of your tithe? Why do you give a tithe and why do you give an offering? What 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 do you think? And then what does the Bible say about those things? I'll, I'll, I'll put it so I can see people's faces. What are your thoughts? Why, why do you give a tithe and why do you give an offering? And, and what is it used for? Um, for me to show my faithfulness to God. And, um, because everything that I have, it's a blessing from him. And so I'm giving back to the institute that he's placed me in. I don't like the word institute there. I'm giving back to the place he placed me in that feeds me. And it helps me to grow spiritually. So me giving to the very place that he ordained me to be in is just showing my faithfulness to him and and just committing my finances and my work to him. Okay, That's so me. so you give your tithe because it's something that you do for the institutions that you are associate yourself okay. with, your spiritual blessing. Right? Well, yep. And, and what do you get in return? Do you think anything is given in return for that? Oh, yeah. You know, you know, he blesses. He blesses, you know. What we give, he gives back, you know. Okay. So we give a tithe to your KBI, and in return, God blesses. So there's nothing that, that the, the priest, me, is, is giving back besides the spiritual blessing. That's that's the circle of that tie in your in your thought. No, you like you specifically what you give, I can only speak for myself, what you give and how God uses you in my life, there's I mean it's there's guidance, there's prayer, there's you know, the umbrella of protection. There's so many things. It's not just one thing. Okay. 
Okay, so you give financially to the church that you are operating in, one of which is KBI, and God blesses you, and then it's, and also you get spiritual guidance and protection. That's what the tithe is for. No, the tithe is because God says to tithe. Okay, it's an act of obedience. It's it's an act of giving back what he's given me and trusting him. It's showing him that I trust him. It's okay. So you give a tithe to give back to God. It has nothing to do with the house that you're in. <laughs> yeah, you really get this. It, it's to give um, back to God. It's to show my obedience. It's to show my faithfulness to him. It's to show him that I trust him. It's, and it's, obedience mainly okay anyone else i'm not i'm i'm, I'm not trying to put you i know but it's just like did I leave out that she counted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I won't, I won't say anything. What does everyone else think the tithe is for? Other than what Chad said, are there any additional answers or different answers? <laughs> Well, you just pins wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like Kathy was saying, God only asks for ten percent of whatever He gives us, and and when we give that back, is we doing it in obedience to what His Word stands for? And you you do get blessed for that. And like she said about you teaching and uh, deliverance, mm -hmm. all of the things that you do. That's a blessing. That's like ten percent. You get more than ten percent, a hundred percent. Um, before I even learned how to tie, I didn't even know how to tie. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to turn TV oh. on one day, and a man on there named Robert Schuler, mm -hmm. and he was talking about ties. But oh, I said, "Oh, I need to tie it," you know. So, but what I did, I tied after I bought my groceries, paid my rent. Bought my vodka, <laughs> and I sent thirteen dollars. See, I didn't realize what he was talking about on time. So he come on one channel nine, and I flipped the other channel. He come on with her. and so I got them. Yeah, no, you don't tie it like that. That's not tied. And then I had to learn how to tie off of the gross and not the net. See, I didn't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. so when I learned, I realized, wow, I'm cheating him, you know, that I'm doing. So one day the Lord told me to look up and I looked up at, at the sky and there was a big check and it was blank. And all I had was Jesus signature on it. But it was blank for me to write in mm -hmm. what I wanted. And I went to church and I think Reverend Morris had just come to our church. Mm -hmm. And that Sunday he talked about tax. Mm. You know, and so I got a real full understanding on how to tithe. So when you tithe, you give a 10% of your income to God, mm -hmm. and that's the purpose of the tithe. To bring me it's in. more than that, just the purpose. And not that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's what? Like I, can't, it I can't hear both of you. Okay. <laughs> it's more than just 10%. It's, it's not just tithing with money. It's tithing with your gift. It's tithing with the blessings. And you'd be blessed to be a blessing. And uh, I I think because right now, I didn't even realize how many places I was tithing to, you know, until I did my income tax. And I go, wow, I didn't know I was doing that many things. But money's always in the mailbox for me. Mm -hmm. It's always in the mailbox. Okay. I, I, because... God blesses you when you bless. Okay, so uh, the windows of heaven will come down as right. in Malachi uh, that David right. talked about last time. Yes. The windows of, oh, yeah. okay. Open up. So what about people that are tithing and the windows of blessing seem like they're locked up? What, what's up with that? You know, I don't know what's 
up with that. I can't answer that, but I'd like to have the answer okay. since I feel you got it. <laughs> Go ahead, Lyle. What do you want to say? Oh, I was like, oh, I, was like I thought it was like earlier. I said, uh, can I tell you why did it dance to, you know, cheating God when the word Malachi three says, well, a man rob. He actually used the word rob. Yeah. But then, so I don't have my own opinions about it no more. Although, I mean, I did learn something because I was unsure if I should give off of my net. Mm -hmm. On my gross, mm -hmm. I was giving off my net. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting on this week. I was like, you know what? I mean, even if it's more, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to rob that. No. You only give him partially to God. You're still robbing him. Yeah. Therefore, you're not going to have the full blessing. Yeah. And also, it doesn't just say tithe. It says tithe, which is the ten percent. Right. Yeah. Literally, that's right. what it means. Mm -hmm. But then it also says and offerings. So even when and you're not giving yeah. offerings, mm -hmm. you're also robbing God. And it does say rob. And when you get it raised, you got to raise it up. Uh, so it actually makes my uh, calculations on my ties a lot easier. Go, okay, this much I make per hour. Yeah. I calculate that. I know how many hours I work. Boom. Yeah. It's like. Okay. Anyone? <laughs> any, go ahead. You got something else? Like whenever I tie that, ask God, how much do you want me to give? How, how much do you want? You know? Well, if he says a tithe is a tenth and you're asking him how much, does he tell you a tenth? Well, I'm, done. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking, question. I'm asking you now I've heard different things like because sometimes I don't know the sum of all the money I bring in sometimes I don't because I don't calculate it. you know that's something else I'm working on but so I don't exactly know that and mm -hmm. like I didn't know that you're supposed to tithe from gross not net yeah I didn't know that mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, I wasn't sure. so it's, actually, it's kind of yeah, bring all the ties from your increase. It says all, all right. kind of means all. So right. that's that's what Malachi, when you were talking, you were confused last week. So that's yeah. what oh, I had to yeah. good brain so <laughs> yeah. bad last week. Anyone have anything <laughs> online to add or the question? Yeah, I have some thoughts. I love this, and this is what we would get out of this. I love when I started reading this because. I realize what you have been teaching us and why you like us to teach because mm -hmm. we are the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. And it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. This is what you've been trying to do because most pastors, we don't, you go to church, you don't see behind what's happening in churches sometimes, even in small churches where one pastor takes the ground, he does everything with. Wilson Ministries in KBI, all of us teach. So we grab things from each other. And that's what this is about. When I talk, it was about the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. We are a Levitical priesthood. And like I told him, this is what Apostle been trying to you know, tell us what to do. And that's why my tithes are going to KBI now and my offering is going somewhere else because I know I'll get blessed. Yes, I was given to KBI but I was just giving some. I always split stuff up, but my tithes are going to us now after I read this. Because I've been in so many ministries where it was just one-sided. You don't see the five-fold ministry operating in churches sometimes, but here I know it's, it's operating, and I love this. And as we as we go forward, forward we'll see. <laughs> Because it blew my mind. And I talk about all us teaching. We get everyone, the prophet, we get the apostle, we get the, the, the preacher, we get all that in this ministry. And we were talking about the wonders of heaven. And he said, this is why we don't get it. We need the full blessing because we can move forward. God will bless our money. Yes. And it talks about what you was talking about. We get blessed now just because of his grace and his mercy over our tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. Because most of the places, if you look at it, and me, you done talked about this, and I talked about this last week when I was going through something with my other church when things was going on. And you asked me, what are you going to do with your tithes now? And I told them that too. But yeah, I, I, I love this because just like we said, we're learning stuff. People don't know what to tie it on and what to do. So this has been a blessing reading this for me. 
Thank you, Daisy. Anyone else? But the tithe of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord. So that's what the tithe is for. Heave offering or wave offering. You, you wave it up to the Lord. That's how come when we get the basket, oftentimes you see them lift the bat. It's a heave. It's a wave offering up to the Lord. And we'll talk about what that wave offering is for. Um, but then it says, I have given the Levites in inheritance thereof, I have said unto them among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. So uh, we'll, we'll get into the what God does. He passes along to the Levites. Now, one thing we don't know, you know, we as the elders or leadership team in um, KBI have made a determination that none of us will receive any monies. I don't get paid. None of the leaders get paid. That That is just well, we decided as a leadership team, but that tithe has every right to go out to the ministers that we have because that's what it's for. But we as a leadership team says we will take no money. So none of us get paid. None of us, mm -hmm. none of us get paid. It goes back into the projects and things that we, that we're, that we do for the people. Gotcha. Money goes to the people. Offerings go to buildings. And so that's how we chose as a leadership team to distribute the funds, um, not anything personal. When Teresa went out of town and she needed money to go, we used that money to send her because she's part of that Levitical tribe. And so we could use that money to send her uh, to places. Even when we go, when we go to conferences, those monies are used to send the people for those conferences because they said that's what we can use. The leadership team says that's, that's what that could be used for. So we don't get it personally, but that's where their your tithes go to. Um, the people, and it goes to, if we're going to training, it goes to that. Other than that, we don't touch that money. It stays there for projects, okay? So that should, so you know where we lift it up what Charles' money's going for, towards, okay? And we are definitely being blessed. Mm -hmm. The windows of heaven have definitely been opened over KBI. We have been blessed. And I believe it's because we are doing what the scripture says we ought to do. And and in turn, you guys the, that you that are tithing, that are giving offering, I believe the blessings are even coming down onto you guys. Um, that things are happening because of your tithes and your offering. So what is a heave, heave offering? A separate portion of an offering that was raised and lowered in dedication to God and that allows afterward was reserved for officiating the priest's use and it was the priestly due. So that's what we just talked about. That's why you see the, the ministers often raising that because it's a he's, he offering that would be dedicated back. Again, the Levites devoted themselves to the word of the Lord. They bring meat of the word of God to God's people. Now that's going to be very important. Bring meat to the people. Many times we don't have meat, we have milk. Levites devoted themselves to, what did you say? Again? The word of the Lord. So they study the Bible. That's what they are so responsible for. Bringing the meat of God's word, not milk, but meat. Now there's a place for milk. When people are just saved, you need to have some basic principles and learning. But when you're still 30 years in the church and you're still on meat, there's a problem with that. If that's all that you're given, you have to be given the meat. And that's what the Levites were charged with, giving milk, but mainly the meat of God's word. So that the people will grow and mature. That's the reason why you need milk, meat. Milk is great to drink for babies, but when this baby gets a little bit older, you keep giving him milk for food, he's going to be starting to get pretty upset. But there's a lot of people in church that are not upset from still getting milk. but And they're not growing. And that's how come I asked a, a friend of mine that's been in a particular church for 30 years, I said, okay, but how are you growing? I said, have you grown since you've been in this church for 30 years? And she says, why are you going to ask me that question? I said, because I want to know. Mm -hmm. And she says, no, actually I haven't. Mm -hmm. And then I asked her, why are you in a place for 30 years and not grow? And she said, I don't know. She never thought about it as why. Mm -hmm. People just do what they do simply because they do what they've always done. 
but it's time for us to understand we have to grow in God because if you're not growing, you're dying. It's time to grow in God. It's time to mature. The whole point of this training center is to mature you to do the work of the ministry, not to watch me. It's so I can watch you. <laughs> That's the whole point of having owners and having partners and so that you can do what God says do. That's when you know the blessing of God will rest fully because we will be surely doing what the scripture is telling us to do. Not only with, as Pauline says, our monetary gifts, but what about the gifts of service? What about the gifts of teaching? What about the gift of prophecy? What about the gift of help? What, why aren't those gifts increasing? Because we're not giving them back and we're not using them as an offering unto God. I got some thoughts. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's, that's what I said last week. How can I be in this ministry? Take what I've learned in here exactly. and take it to a church. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I take what is taught in Wilson and in, in KBI to church. Yep. Well, that, that's the whole point of the training center. That's why we don't have church on Sundays is so that we can be trained and go back to your church. Um, that's that's what Latte did with her church. And I met with her pastor. Now he wants to use uh, me as a consultant to help their prayer team. I mean, that's the whole point of, you know, of us going back into our regions and infecting our regions. And it might not be a church. It might be your community. Wendy took it back into, you know, she was dying in Bighorn and hell lo and behold, Shelly was, Sherry was dying. A, a couple people were dying and now they've come together and now they have, they have a life now. They have something to kind of share. That's not a church building, but it's a community. And that's what this is for, to use your gift in the community, whatever community it is. It could be a church. It could be a high school. It, could, it doesn't matter. We have to remember, we are here to infect every sphere of society, not just the church. That's why it's so important for you guys to learn and go back out there. I don't want you just to sit here. It's not really about bringing people to KBI. It's about KBI going out and Getting your own people. They'll never have to meet me. It's not about me. It's about your gift and showing people who you are every place you are. That's taking the meat. That, taking the that's meat. having the meat and then giving it to share to other people. That's what this is about, right? So we have to use the gift for others' use. And we have to understand when we don't use our gift and we don't do what we're supposed to do, that's impurity against the covenant of God. We're not doing what the covenant of God, which has called us to be priests mm -hmm. in this day and age. The time for us to sit down and just be fed at that time is past. We have to be feed, we have to, we have to begin to feed others. Okay. <laughs> covenant destroying traditions. So when we think about the tithe. We, uh, oops, went too far. The purpose of the tithes, I think that's what that was. There's three purposes of the tithe. Doctrine to study, again, to bring meat, not milk, according to Mal Malachi 3 and 10. Devotion to mature the saints, not baby them. You're not here to be babing people. It's time to get your diapers off. It's time they really put on some underwear. Because, uh, you know, poopy diapers. I don't really like to choose poopy diapers. Devotion to what? <laughs> yes. To, to mature the saints. That's the purpose of the tithe. You give a tithe so that I can study the word and the leadership team and you can study. I mean, we had everyone. Everyone here studies. Everyone here teaches. Like David said, this is not a one-man show. You cannot have a one-man show. The time for one-man ministry is past. This is too big for just being <clears throat> one person. That's how come this home base operation has got to get stronger because y'all already know I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going more. And so this has to stay strong in this in this area, in this region, because we have work to do here. But it's not going to be all my work. It's going to be y'all. <laughs> Disease protection. Numbers 
8, uh, 8 and 19, the plagues and deception which destroyed those in the world system will not destroy us. We will be protected by the truth. Disease, when we talk about this, when it, when it says that uh, in Malachi 3, it says none of these plagues will hurt you. This is the lying systems in the world. These are uh, systems and teaching that's coming to destroy. You won't be destroyed by them. Why? Because God's going to protect you with the truth. You're going to be able to hear. Uh, uh, we were just, Shelly and I was just talking about that, that uh, it just is so, something's off with that. It's a lot of truth, but it's a little bit off. That little bit off makes it false. Even though it sounds a lot true, that little bit of falseness makes it all false. That's what it means about these plagues and deception. They won't get you because the Holy Spirit will kind of say, something's not quite right. That, that's what that that tithe gives you to, to begin to understand that when you're being matured and the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, that that's part of the gift of that tithe. It's not just blessings and money. It's spiritual blessings. You, you, and, you, and you're going to mature. That's how you know that your tithe is working in the place that you're sowing the tithe. Now, you may be in a place and not tithing, Right? You, I, I've, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this in wisdom, I've seen this, that people have been in wisdom and they haven't tithed, they haven't given an offering, they haven't given anything, they just come and they learn, they have not received the blessing of that teaching that people that have tithed did, it has nothing to do with me, because mm -hmm. both of you are sitting at the same table, but God doesn't have to honor and give you that opening in the spirit because you're not, it's like you're going to a restaurant and you're not paying for the food. You're robbing God. Why should he open up a spiritual blessing when you're just there to take and you're not there to give? I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. God is a God of his word. Mm -hmm. You may be trying to use your own intellect to understand, but God has locked your intellect down because you're robbing him and he doesn't have to honor. Yeah. What you're what you're hearing. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> God owns the tithe. The tithe is everything from the land, whether it was grain or soil or fruit, belongs to God. Well, we don't, we're not from an agricultural city. You know, if, if we were up for an agricultural city, we would be sowing fruit. But we don't do agriculture. And so our fruit and the work of our hands is from the money that we've raised. You may have an argument. You do have an argument from people that are saying tithing is no longer um, a real thing because all the tithes were grain, fruit, and produce. So therefore the tithe is out. But it's the work of your hand. That is what you're tithing off of, the work of your hand, the seed of your hand. And so you have to take it for what you want to believe, but you will always have people that, say that tithing is old school. But I show you, it's in the Old and the New Testament. Jesus even said when it came to... Well, I, 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 the tradition. Tithes was an increase in working the land, not money. I talked about that already. We use money today because it is, it is our work in our land. We give because we increase in our labor. No matter what labor we have, we should put that in. I think, uh, I don't know who said it. I think Pauline said it. She's probably in five different ministries. So she ties to five different ministries. I tie to uh, five, three ministries because those are the three ministries that grow me. So I tie them to three ministries and then I give offering into other ministries that I give to. So that's how I spend my tithe. And I'm going over and above to tithe into the 10. I would love, I would love, I would love to live off of 10% and give God 90. <laughs> that used to say that. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be awesome. So tithing given to a local church. Uh, gifts was given to the priesthood who fed them, them spiritually and take care of their needs that they were offered. That's what Cassie said. She she goes to where she's spiritually fed. A lot of people say just goes to the local church. Well, you can go to your local church, but if you're in your local church and you're not growing anything, are they feeding you spiritually? That's really the, the, the whole point of it. When I go to church, 
I, I give an offering. I, it's nothing wrong with giving an offering, but I give my tithe to what just teach me how to worship and warfare. That's where my tithe is. Because it's a storehouse, it's an armory, and that armory is used for war. So that's just me. Tradition was what has destroyed the covenant blessings of God. Don't let the tradition of what people have told you to destroy the blessing. If you're getting blessing from where you're tithing, praise God. That means that not only are you um, uh, being a pure altar, but the altar that you're sowing into is also pure and the blessing of God is coming down. Not just on you, but on the people that are in that particular uh, area that is also partaking in the sowing, uh, in, the, in the tithes and offering. So New and Old Testament gifts to the priests, again, I'm gonna say it again, maturing the saints by bringing forth meat and not milk, help people walk, in a way pleasing to God through the fullness of the covenant, not through convenience. We can't have a ministry of convenience. We have to have a ministry of covenant. Covenant makes all the difference in the world. If you, covenant means this, I war for you and you war for me. Convenience is I'll go to war for you if, if, if I have time, if I have space, if, if it fits my agenda. And that's what most people war for because it fits their agenda. That's not covenant. Ensuring there will be no plagues or deception among the people. There's going to be true doctrine that's taught, not false teaching. So I said that a couple of times. So covenant destroying traditions, it says in the book, the priest must teach. I like this, what it said in the book. It must teach intention. And what that says for my mathematical brain a versus B or A with B, okay? So that means this, A is grace with justice. If you're gonna teach truth, you have to teach grace with justice, not just grace. It's not just grace. You also have to teach a, 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 what justice is. It's not just mercy. You also have to teach judgment. So it's mm -hmm. mercy with judgment. That's balanced teaching. It's healing with suffering you just don't teach you're going to be healed it's with suffering you're going to have to go through some stuff if you're going to be having truth you got to have the tension associated with it deliverance everybody wants deliverance but they don't want any ad adversity it's going to be deliverance with adversity that's going to be bound sound teaching that you have to understand everybody wants to be healed but they don't want to go through anything that's 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 not going to work there's got to be attention. Tradi tradition teaches us comfort and excitement. To restore a covenant, we must teach truth. And that truth has attention. There's always going to be tension uh, with truth that's going to be that's going to be taught. So teaching also requires accountability. James 3 says uh, the teaching ministry has the greatest level of accountability. That's going to be so important. You cannot teach and have a life that nobody wants to follow because it's going to make your teaching of no effect. So tradition says, I'm going to teach a religious systems, but you must teach truth to restore covenant. As a teacher, you're not just teaching to teach a religious system. You're teaching so that you can teach truth. Tradition, it says in the scripture, it talks about being blind guides, fools, and blind. We must walk in truth to restore the covenant. This is accountability teaching. Tradition says I can teach hypocrisy. I can be double-minded, live one way and do something else. That's not really the teaching that we're supposed to be under. We must live by the standard of God's word so that we can restore covenant. Everything that we're doing is to restore covenant. I'm not going to steal from you because I'm breaking covenant. I'm not going to lie on you because that's going to break the covenant. I'm not going to take advantage of you because that's going to destroy the covenant. Everything that I do and everything that I teach is because of covenant. It's because I respect God and I respect our relationship enough that I'm not going to mess over you because covenant doesn't mean I'm going to have to reciprocate because my covenant with God says this, even when I sin, he stood by me. Even when you do me wrong, I'm going to stand by Amen. you. God's going to 
going to do whatever he has to do to you. But for me, I'm going to stand in covenant. That's, right. that's what you have to understand as teachers. That's what you have to understand as Levites. You do it because of covenant. But if you don't understand covenant, you will not walk in honor. You will walk by comfort. I don't feel like liking Cassie today. Stand in line. <laughs> Tradition works by selfish greed. This yeah. mixture, guilt, disobedience, and rebellion. We must love. As Can you repeat those again? What was that? Selfish greed is mixture, guilt, disobedience, and rebellion. We must love as a servant of God to restore covenant. Can't do it because of, I mean, just think about it. I love this picture because when we begin to act in disobedience and rebellion, what we're saying is we're ripping the covenant up with God. That's what we're saying. Yeah. But, but, but I want to teach the people. Yeah. But I want to rip this covenant yeah. up with God. Yeah. I do what he says to do. Yeah. I want to do it the way I want to do it. You rip Covenant up. That's not accountability. That's why I tell you guys all the time honor. Honor is important. You've got to learn honor because you will honor covenant. But if you have no honor, you will rip that covenant up every time. You've got to understand. You've got to honor your word. You've got to, your word's got to be your bond. Yeah. But we rip the covenant up every time. Does somebody have something? I, I was going to just share something, um, Pastor. Um, an example, I mean, that comes to me is I was talking to one of the ladies from Oklahoma and today, and she was telling me how she was frustrated every few, uh, last week uh, and saying to herself, you know, to the Lord, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit. Um, but then she remembered the promise that she had made to God um, and to Apostle and saying that, no, she wasn't going, no, she wasn't going to quit. So she went back and the things that took place, I mean, the things that God did, the healing and the freedom that came to her and her relationship um, at the, you know, with the ministry, it was amazing. She shared the examples and I'm like, look, I said, because you decided not to quit and you remembered the promise and the covenant that you made, you know, with God and apostle. And it was just, yeah, it was, so it was a great example as you're sharing this to, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you cannot you cannot, you, you have to understand covenant. If you don't understand covenant, you will never understand God. You, your word has to be God's word. He became flesh. That's how important his word is. And we treat our word as if it's nothing. We say, and we say, I'll do this. But soon as it gets hard, we ripped the covenant up. I can't do this. I quit. I wasn't, I didn't hear, oh, this is what, I didn't hear God right. Come on, if you didn't hear them right then, what makes you hear it? You think you're hearing them right now? You have to honor, it's going to come with tension. Huh? How many comes with tension? It's not going to be easy. You've got to fight through the tension. That's what covenant is. Your fight is mine and mine is yours. Not because it gets hard, I quit. You rip the covenant. Tradition makes God's word of no effect. That's what you do when you rip up that cup. You make his word of no effect. Now, how bad is that? Signs of impure altars. They gave two examples in the text. Jericho was the first one. Jericho, as we recall, was the first city taken and promised in the promised land that was given to the Israelites, but it was defiled. How it was defiled is the second way that you get an impure altar from this book. So Jericho represent a place of, the, of um, defiance, the, the defiance against God and his work. It also talks about being prohibited and uh, forbidden places where God declared it to be utterly destroyed. Now think about it. God has told us to utterly destroy or to walk away from things in our life, but we just want a little bit of it. We don't utterly destroy it. That becomes an impure altar because you have now defiled God. When he's told you to utterly destroy something from, from a holy sacrifice and to sacrifice whatever it is that you're doing, 
And you say, well, I'll just have a little bit. You've now defiled. You're now walking in disobedience. AI was the next place. AI was a place that should have been victorious, but sin in the camp caused utter defeat. We were having a conference one time and we were not having victory. And God told me there was sin in the camp. And I began to pray about where this sin was in our ministry because we were getting beat up because somebody was just acting a donkey. And I had to address the sin in the camp because your sin, when you're associated with someone in covenant, it messes everybody up. That's what happened in AI. That because they said, should we fight? No, you, you Aiken stole some stuff when they was in Jericho. And I, and I told you to give me that was my first offering. They went and they fought in AI and they got their butts whipped. Yeah. Some of you getting your butts whipped simply because you're, you have not honored what God told you to destroy. And so therefore your butt's getting beat up torn to pieces and you wonder why God's not listening to you it's because you didn't listen to him and then he's totally doing what you're doing to him and now you're saying there is no God oh, repent Do, destroy what he's telling you to destroy stop making it God's problem it's your problem yeah. you just do what he told you to do that's, the, that's how you get an impure altar yeah. disobedience items that should be surrendered or given to God but you keep it so you break your blessing. That t-shirt. You break the blessing for a t-shirt. You break the blessing for a kiss. You break the blessing so that you can have that man see you. You break stupid stuff. We break the it's just stupid stuff. It's not even worth it. That's right. Come on. A God that wants to bless you abundantly, and you're not going to be blessed because you want a t-shirt or, or because you want somebody to like you. Me a break. I don't care if nobody likes me. If God is not be for me, I don't care who's against me. We have to understand the covenant. The Lord forsake the covenant. It's people. Yeah, it won't work because I had a cross just to do somebody crying. Think. did you do what God told you to do? Is this the relationship God told you to have? Are, are you doing what God said to do? Well, no. Pray and obey. He told you to cut them off. Cut them off. Click. <laughs> 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 obedience releases the blessing but disobedience releases the curse is there any disobedience in the things that God has said for you to do have you been disobedient to the word of God use the gift for the purpose stated by God whatever God gives you put it to the purpose that he's told you I remember one time I was going through, I didn't have heat in my house. I had to wash my kids' hair. I, we had to go to the gym in Shelton so I could wash my kids' hair because we had no electric in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know where I was going to get food. I didn't know how I was going to get gas. And I said to the kids, let's go have fun and let's go to the, to the high school and let's go swimming. Yeah. Couldn't get up. Yeah. Because that's the only way I could wash, get the hair washed, and get a hot shower. Yes. And I remember, I didn't have the money. So I said, well, maybe I'll just tie it off my neck. God will understand. People say, surely he'll understand. He yeah. doesn't need that. I did it for one paycheck. I said, never again. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. Ever since then. I've been tithing off of my gross because it, it was the worst feeling I've ever had. And God has been taking care. We don't even know how we got through. I have no idea how we got through. But I'm telling you, God is a miracle worker. 
Disobedience sets you up for an impure altar. But when you are obedient to God, obedience is better than sacrifice. You've got to give it to God. You've got to give it to God, little man. You got to, he's up there looking at me. Sucking. You've got to give it up. He says, covenant destroying condition tithe and offering alone isn't what makes the covenant work we must be in union with god's purpose for the tithe and the offering we also must individually uh we must as individuals be obedient to our heart like cassie said she prayed and asked god what do you want me to give i went to church a couple of weeks ago and i asked god should i sow into this altar and he told me no i didn't ask why yeah. He told me no. no. So I didn't sow into it. Mm -hmm. Every altar you give an offering or ask, he'll let you know. You don't know all the ins and outs of every church you go into, but just ask. Right. Purity of the altar. The condition of the altar either makes the gift holy or unholy, pure or impure, acceptable or rejected. What is the condition of the altar you're sowing into? It, is is it a pure or is it an impure altar? Because if you have, if you're sawing a portion into an impure altar, you're allowing that to come into your life. But if you're not sawing anything into any altar, then you have an issue that way too. When we give an impure to when we give them an impure altar, we lose our covenant promise from God's multiplication and increase. Just test them, pray and obey. Pray and obey. That's all I can say. It had something in here about manipulation and the uh, root of impurity. I think next week, I don't know who's teaching, but someone's teaching, I think Teresa, on manipulation. But this is just a little portion of it. The kingdom is giving. The church is taking. Are you giving or are you taking? You understand that? The kingdom is giving, but the church is taking. Are you giving or are you taking? That means, are you part of the kingdom or are you just part of the church? Many of us are just part of the church. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Manipulation may get you your way, but you lose God's way. You will end up fighting more wars instead of living in peace. Are you living in pieces or are you living in pieces? That's really going to be a determination. The first uh, the, the fruit of manipulation in the, in the long term is conditional financial wars, continual, sorry, financial wars. Manipulation destroys our ability to walk with God. We have to understand you can, if you're sowing, this is manipulation. I was talking to somebody, I think I was saying and I were talking, we were talking about these prophetic lines. You got a thousand dollar prophecy line, a hundred dollar prophecy line, and a ten dollar prophecy line. Yeah. You get in the line that you want, and that's the prophecy I'll give you. That's manipulation. There's no a thousand dollar prophecy and a ten dollar prophecy. Yeah. Come on, that's manipulation. <laughs> and people will get in those lines thinking they're getting God, but what they're actually doing is getting manipulation sewn into their life. Fundraising for, for profit, marketing strategies, and percentage split. It talks about in this book where you have, what do they call them? Um, professional fundraisers. Yes. Professional fundraisers in church, what they do is I come and raise an offering for, my, for this man or woman of God, but I get a split yeah. because I'm a good fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And everything that comes, I get a percentage of it. That's a, a professional fundraiser in the church. And they have those yeah. where they're good at raising funds, but they're getting half the profits. That's why I don't want no chicken dinners with KBI. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, 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 I don't want no fish dinners. I want God to supply. Yeah. Fundraising is great, but I don't want it to be manipula manipulation. I want it to be pure. Mailing list receive uh, receiving communication not requested friends of friends or emails and social media all of these are ways of getting into manipulating you oh Charlene gave me your email address <laughs> all right honey I'm almost done 
The kingdom is giving, the church is taking. Are you giving or taking? What are you doing, honey? <laughs> these are just some more roots of manipulation. I'll let you read these. What is this? 10, uh, 10 or 11 areas of manipulation. Um, I'm going to go through these really quickly because of time, I think. Um, competition. These are corrupting influences. Competition for money and leadership. Okay? Money is the competition because they care more about, they say members equal money, not maturity. We have to care about maturity. I don't care how many seats are taken in KBI because I want maturity. I don't think that your seat here represents money. I think it has to represent maturity. And then they also had competition in leadership. Envy, jealousy, pride does not lead to servanthood. These are corrupting influences we're talking about. Numbers of leaders. Some people say that if you have a large leadership team, that that means that you have a large, great ministry. But uh, numbers don't mean unity. I'd rather have a small team that's unified than a large team that's totally disorganized. Numbers of people. Growth in the size of people doesn't mean that souls are being saved. Mm -hmm. I don't care if we have 10 people come to an event. If those 10 people are saved and getting mature, why have 100 people that are just coming to check the roll? Right. I, I like this picture where the people are going into the church and as they go into the church, they're falling off the cliff because that they, they, they're not really giving their souls to, to heaven. These are cor uh, corrupting influence. More money and people doesn't mean that you have more of God, okay? Giving and worship, these are corrupting influence. We talked about gimmicks. We talked about deception, so I'm not gonna go over that. We have to give freely. Give based on the freedom that God says to give. I remember one time I had got a check and he told me to give like $2,000. Now, this is during the time when I didn't have money, and I $2,000 was like, I, mean, God, I needed that to pay whatever it was that I needed to pay. I don't have this. Mm -hmm. But he told me to write the check. And I'm like, I don't these people. Mm -hmm. That was the first time. So he told me to write this check. People. Mm -hmm. I wrote the check. And I, I don't even know why I wrote the check. Well, I know why, because he told me. And I don't even know the fruit that came out of that check. All I know is he told me to do it. And all I do know, the check that I wrote, whatever I needed the money for, he supplied. That's right. If you do what God tells you to do, even if you don't have it, yeah. God will make a way out of no way. Yes. You cannot hold on to money because you think that you give, give, give. 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 And do it cheerfully. Yeah. Don't give to hear. I'm going to tell you this. This is mine. This doesn't come from the book. Don't give to hear from God. Give because you hear from him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Except when you fight for your two dollars. No, don't be fighting. For, give him the two dollars <laughs> and the <laughs> bag of chips. <laughs> yeah. And what about that belt buckle with the eagle on it? Well, Corrupting <laughs> influence. Church growth and success. We talked about marketing and performance. Marketing and performance does not equal revival. We have to understand that. We've already talked about milk. Grow by comfortable stories is not growing in truth. I'm never going to give y'all comfortable stories. Y'all yeah. know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you I just made me cry. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I want to teach you truth. And the truth that you're free. Not being a respecter person. I think y'all know I'm, pro I'm probably not. That one is going to be a respecter person. I'll go to the person in the back as good as I go to the person in the front. Mm -hmm. But growth based on a catering to the rich or a targeted giver is not mm -hmm. equality of person. We've got to treat everybody uh, uh, equal. And I'm so glad that when I was going out of town and you had some type of rift that came in, I think somebody came in and they were not necessarily right. And y'all wanted to take that person out. And they said, wait, Charlene said, we got to love everybody. And y'all let the person stay. I was so grateful that y'all loved the person instead of tossing them out. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a good report for me. 
that y'all did that. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad. Thank you, God. Who was that? What happened? Don't. It, it, it was a good report. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so bigger okay. is bigger really better and i show you this picture is a nickel which is bigger than a dime really better don't we create a bigger church to a better church mm -hmm. many times we do we think more is better more is not always better bigger is not always better success is based on obedience jesus had 12 not on it being bigger your obedience matters. You have to obey. That is your success factor. Your success factor is not based on how many people receive what you say, but your success factor is based on your obedience to say what God said to say. You know, that's right. You know, yeah. because that disobedience or that t-shirt, uh, it opened the door. Two days after, no, actually the next day after taking that t-shirt, God told me no. Mm. And then he had my boss, which is a pastor. My boss told me, throw that in the garbage can. I didn't do it. I took it home the next day I came down with COVID. Mm. The next day, you know, two days after that, I had a stroke. I had all these symptoms. But what hurt more than anything is that I disobeyed that hurt. And what I'm feeling now, I'm still feeling it. And I need to feel it. You know, I'm not walking in condemnation. I did repent, but I still feel that. Like Sometimes our mistakes, hopefully all the time, our mistakes, we learn from them because the pain of what we did to yeah. offend God yeah. will stop us from doing it. <laughs> you know, la what Lazarus was upset because like he knew it was God but he still killed himself mm -hmm. he wasn't to the point of repentance right Judas sorry Judas. Said like, I, was Judas. Judas. <laughs> Judas. I was over here going uh, wrong I mean, what happened to Lazarus <laughs> I was texting y'all teaching <laughs> <laughs> one of my fathers this is why I'm going to a lot of I don't remember anything. Your mistake should have you repent, not kill yourself. That's the whole that point. Doing that? That's, hey, I corrected. I corrected from last week to do this. See? They opened up some doors. I'm serious. I got sick. I had a witch in my room. I had visitation. I mean, yeah, and you had us praying, making judicial decrees over your life I because mean, of your. Uh, see how y'all be working? Okay. Already <laughs> <laughs> on here. Bro doesn't mean more. More comes from obedience to God. Yeah. You, we, we have got to learn to obey God yeah. and stop obeying what we at want all. at all costs. Oh. Yes. Church culture. Church cultures that prey on people. We can't pray on people. We have to pray over people. P-R-E-Y versus P-R-A-Y. The, the works, you know, this church culture, if you do the work, I'll, I'll get what, you know, righteousness. Works don't require faithfulness or righteousness or relationships. You have to do it because of faith. Preaching culture, uh, preaching the pleas of culture, not preaching to preach truth. And then denominations has replaced demonstration of faith. People believe more in their, in their denominations than they believe in demonstrating the faith and power of God. People want church culture, not kingdom culture. The question is, what do you want? Finally, we talk about political hirelings and uh, politicians and hirelings. These are the characteristics laid out in the book. Spiritual politicians defile the altar. They long for position, power, and influence. And the result of that is division, disharmony, disunity, and strife. Mm -hmm. Hirelings uh, mentality seeks to control, operate by fear, uh, and they're afraid of partnerships. 
They have no covering. They don't want a covering. They want to be number one. They lack submission to men. And some of them even submit. They don't even want to submit to God. They rule by fear or jealousy. And they threaten by stronger or anointed people. The result of that is controlling, fearful, and mammon-driven people. True shepherds, however, in, in, ensure that their sheep are fed. They know the sheep need more than he or she provides. So that's how come they have the five ingredients in the five-fold ministry because you need all five to mature. Mature Maturity happens in the ministry uh, and, uh, and they get a balanced diet and they seek to meet, the meet, to meet the needs of the people and they operate based on teams. So what are you honoring at the altar? That's always going to be the, the last question. Purifying altars deal with transformation of the heart from self-seeking to serving to, from tradition to deliverance. If an individual joins to a corporate off altar that's impure, the acts given unites that individual to an impure altar. Homework is going to be chapter six and seven of the book. That concludes our class. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, other than what's already been stated? Are you going to sleep over there, Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> not Shelly, Terry. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Did you have something, Wendy? No, uh uh. Anyone in the room? I'm going for position. Probably sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for what we've learned. We thank you that we will sow into a pure altar. Forgive us. We repent for the things we've done in disobedience, taking t-shirts or taking things that weren't ours or whatever we've done in disobedience to you. Father, forgive us for our sin. We want you to bless us. And in order to be blessed, we, we, we want to walk in obedience. Mm -hmm. Father, we love you. We honor and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you all. Good night. Mm -hmm. See you. Oh. So, oh, did someone have a question? Pastor, huh? on the, because I normally, you know, I do a check, you know, me, I write checks. But on the cash app, is it it's it's dollar sign wisdom but is it one nine six four beside it or some other number Hold on, I got it right. i'll send it to you i don't know what it is uh, okay i just Look. looked on there yesterday. got a car an old like t-model car as the profile picture no i don't think so yes yeah, for wisdom ministries oh i i don't know what it i don't know oh okay <laughs> i don't think it's a car yes I'll, 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 <laughs> okay. No, Kaya, thank you. Yeah, checks are good. Wisdom, cash out. Good. I know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I uh, okay, this is what she said it is. I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it. It's all blue. Go closer to the. Go over. You see it? Oh. Uh, Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't give to where I pulled up because that's not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Somebody getting paid. <laughs> You're like, you first giving to an impure author. In, any other questions, comments? Thank you. All right. Thank you all. David, don't hang up. Okay. David, don't hang up.